813 on 92.9 Dave FM. Jimmy Barron and Yvonne Monet. Along with our legal expert, Ray Judice. Ray can be seen every Tuesday on Nancy Grace's show on HLN. All over the tube. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Uh, Before we get to the business at hand, I was at dinner the other night, and the check came... (laughs) <laughs> and all I had was a salad and a baked potato, but everybody else wanted to split it, and they all had steaks and chops, and it cost me sixty-three dollars right. uh, for my salad, baked potato. And I would like to sue my friends for this money. Do you, will you take my case? I will take the case, but I think there's a counterclaim against you for wimping out. You should have stepped up, and in fact, you should have left a bigger tip and shamed them all. I just that ain't gonna my, happen. <laughs> I think you took the girl away, as it was said earlier. I just want my money back. All that. right. So, uh, the, the holiday season, it kind of officially starts, you know, the holiday party season mm-hmm. officially start started this week, yeah. And uh, people are hosting holiday parties, and there was an article on Lawyers.com this week about all the responsibility that you have as a host. First of all, give us a thumbnail sketch of, you know, alcohol-related responsibilities that you have as the host. It's much more than most people think, both as homeowners or restaurant owners or party givers in an office party situation. You actually have a legal liability and responsibility in the state of Georgia to make sure that your guest does not leave your home intoxicated, especially if you know that they're going to get into a car and drive. You can be responsible, not criminally, but civilly. They cause an injury, they cause an accident. You can be sued for providing the alcohol to the intoxicated guest. Would that type of suit, let's say that did happen to you and you were sued, do you know if, like, if you had an umbrella insurance yes, policy, yes. Would, that, would, would it cover that? Yes, unless there's an exclusion, but most homeowners' policies are going to cover that. Same as policies that cover restaurants and bars. They have coverage for this, and most bartenders and waiters at good restaurants are trained not to overserve patrons. I mean, there's a tips class that some of the alcohol distributors offer. I've had several of those cases. They're called dram shop, dram shop being the old language, English language, for a place that served alcohol. And it can be quite successful litigation against these people. And uh, you want to find a homeowner's policy if you're going to sue. Talking to Ray Judice, our legal expert. So you got a party at your house. Is there any way that you can do this as the homeowner to, you know, say, to, to, to try to stave off the uncomfortable end of the night? And I don't know if you should drive. I, I would just not let him drive. I would make sure there's a cab or a car service available. Some people even rent these little intoximeters, handheld breath <laughs> test machines. You've seen them in the paper to just check people. That's really not a good defense. But you just need to make sure people know that there's a couch downstairs to sleep it off on or a cab or we'll drive you home or you just have to take their keys away from them. That's right. That's what at the Monet house, if we were to have a a house party, which we won't, but if we were to have people (laughs) over for the holidays, we would just explain that you're going to have a lot of cat hair on your clothes and you're welcome to spend the night. Right. You know, but Yvonne, you used to own a bar. Did you ever take the keys away from someone who was getting in a car? Yes. I took keys away. I drove people physically, myself, drove them home. Because uh, in Noonan, not a lot of taxi services. Right, uh-huh. right. Yeah, I took that on plenty they, of times. Did they fight you? Oh, yeah, completely. But um, I often use the, the phrase, I know your children, and I don't want to explain to them why you're not coming home. And, and I that think usually it usually worked. Yeah, I think in a smaller community, that's something that would work real well, well for the bar here, owner. But here but in Atlanta, it's going to be difficult. It's tough and, business. and uh, you want to make sure your, your people are trained, even at a holiday party in my office. I want to make sure if we've got Joe who's having a few too many, that somebody, especially me, grabs him by the elbow and maybe takes care of the problem. So you do have the same responsibility as owning a a bar. In fact, you have more because you have more to lose. Absolutely. If you've got a question for Ray Judice regarding this, you can give us a call, 404-741-0929. That is free legal advice. That doesn't happen too often. (laughs) The other thing I read on this this piece on uh, Lawyers.com had to do with if you're having, let's say, a holiday party with office workers and sexual impropriety goes on within the confines of your home, maybe it's a boss and a subordinate, that you could possibly be exposed legally. Yeah, you're talking really there about creating a hostile work environment, even if it's in the home of the CEO of the company, and that person allows sexual discrimination, harassment, inappropriate conduct to go on and allows that hostile environment to uh, be created, they may have civil liability. And as we discussed a little bit earlier, then you'd have other people who actually didn't go to the party who'd say, wait a second, I missed out on the party and the business opportunities because I didn't want to be sexually harassed. So Mm -hmm. those claims could come from both directions. Again, the operative language is 
the hostile work environment, and that doesn't necessarily have to be at the physical workplace. Although if you're not the boss, if, if, if it just is at your house and let's say something happens between the boss and a worker, that's got to be hard to – that's going to be hard to prosecute you That would be a tougher case. It, you're yeah. really looking at liability for the owners of the business or those who are in supervisory control, not just one of the dock workers who has a barbecue at his house. We're speaking with Dave FM's legal expert, Ray Judice. Ray, we have Mark on the line who's got a question for you. Go ahead, Mark. Hi. I had a question about uh, you have a private party in your house, and you said you could – take the keys from the guest. I mean, can you literally forcefully take them from the guest, or what if he turns out not to be drunk or claims he wasn't drunk? Well, look, I mean, I think that's a great question. You don't want to get into a fisticuff or a fight over this or create violence, but, I mean, you just got to look at, you know if somebody's impaired and intoxicated, you know how many drinks they've had and how they're behaving, and if you think they're a danger on the highways to themselves or somebody else, you've got to do something, and I have a couple of cases right now where my clients were actually called in by their spouse. There was a a fight, a domestic spat. Uh, The husband ran out of the house intoxicated, got in the car, and the wife called it in, and he was arrested for DUI. (laughs) He's not happy about that, but she may have saved his or someone else's life. Yeah. These laws, by the way, suck, for the record. <laughs> that a bar o- Seriously, that a bar owner has to baby. you got 400 people in your bar. you got to be able to monitor the BAC of every single and person there. And that's why I that got call. out of the business. Right. But keep in <laughs> yeah. mind, they're the professionals. I'm serving the alcohol. I've got the responsibility. Yeah. Talking to Ray Judice, 404-741-0929. Uh, do you see a lot of these cases where uh, a homeowner has, uh, is, is being brought to court or... Increasingly, increasingly, you're seeing those where the parents uh, have left the children, or when I say children, I mean young teens or, or late, early 20s in their house with a, with a keg party, oh, and yeah. the parents know about it. And then a 17-year-old kid who came to the keg party, maybe even uninvited, has too many, has a wreck, hurts somebody. You're seeing litigation like that. There's a couple of big cases in Gwinnett County where... You know, the captain of the football team was killed, uh, served too much alcohol at a house party that the parents knew about but didn't supervise. So, yeah, this is going to happen more and more. All right, stuff to be aware of. Ray Judice, who you can find on our Ask the Ex- Expert section at Dave.fm. Thank you very much, Ray. Thanks, My Ray. pleasure. Thanks, guys. It's 820.